people have asked about the sardines that I get. Um, I really don't notice a difference in brand. I've used both, but for the sardines, in fact, I'll get both. This one, you want them in water with no salt, just basically sardine in water. So this one, this is the one I tend to get the most just because, but that's what I use. But what you want to avoid is anything in oil. This, by the way, is just, you know, where all the tuna and that kind of stuff is. It's where I would expect to find it. It's like I'm looking at these, but I always just buy the frozen stuff. Is this just salmon or is it... Oh, I'm old. I don't have my reading glasses. Salmon, water, whoop, vegetable broth. Nope. We'll just go with the fresh. Salmon. It's this right here, just the frozen stuff. Thankfully my kids eat it. And I'll show you how I use it later. So, when it comes to using salmon uh, for scenting or for feeding, uh, this is what I do. These are just frozen and now thawed uh, salmon fillets you can buy at the grocery store, the ones that you saw earlier in the video that I picked up. And you see just naturally as they thaw, liquid collects in the bottom. I usually don't use condiment cups that are this size. They're a little bigger than I prefer, but I cut off the top, obviously. And then I drain the liquid into these, just like this, a little squeeze like a sponge. And we have salmon for dinner. I know this one, by the way, when I thaw these, I just, uh, there's two ways to do it. The preferred method is always to uh, put them in your fridge overnight. I never have the foresight to plan that far ahead. So um, the other way that is also safe is you just leave them in the bags like this, in the vacuum seal packaging, um, in a shallow bit of water, not hot, not cold, just kind of lukewarmish. Uh, maybe on the cooler side, so it doesn't thaw too quickly. And it doesn't take long for them to thaw. So I drain this liquid. Again, I usually use smaller condiment cups. Um, actually, they're usually like the two ounce ones. These are, I don't know what they are, six. Um, but like everything during COVID, they're a little harder to find at the moment. So I drain the liquid. The other way that this works is to use fresh salmon fillets. I've done that as well, and there's always liquid in the bottom. Oops, well, that's what disinfectant for. Uh, that I always use the, um, you can use the liquid in the bottom of the fresh salmon packaging. So you can see you get quite a bit of, quite a bit of these. Um, I have some really tiny hognose runts, western hognose runts, that uh, are too small even for pinky heads, so I give them fresh, uh, or you know, thawed slices of salmon and they seem to prefer it over sardine although they will eat some of that as well so i do this for all the liquids you can see that's quite a bit um and this and then what i would do is uh well what i will do is you know i put the lids on them and put them in our freezer usually our snake freezer um and then you can thaw them uh, for single use and when I scent I just literally dip the mouse whatever it is in the liquid and serve I have found salmon is far is the most successful scent that I use over anything I have tried tuna sardine Vienna sausage egg egg white yolk only um, gosh, tilapia frog frog link an old gecko toad Toad is the only thing that truly is magic. Um, yeah, I can't think of, I don't know. I've used everything. I've never had success with tuna. I've heard a lot of people say use tuna and heard a lot of people having success with it, but I have not been in that population. Um, if your hog is going off food, the number one reason outside of the obvious, which is going into shed, uh, going into breeding season, especially a male, or gearing up towards brumation, which it's September. My males, about half of them are starting to, to forget about food and get ready for brumation. If it's not those things, if it's spring and you've got a young established feeder that never needed scented before, nine times out of 10, there's something in the environment that is not to their liking. It can be something as ridiculous as they're on bedding instead of paper towels, which is what they're used to. I've had that. It could be the enclosure is too large, which is usually the problem, or too exposed, like the glass walls of a tank 
versus a um, secure uh, tub. If it's, you know, you usually don't need to resort to scenting. Now, that said, I have some boys, I have some girls too, that just randomly will quit eating for six weeks. Um, if they are the anomaly, we have something like 50 hogs here and I can count on one hand the ones that will randomly decide that they want scented. This is my go-to scent. This is the one that if they haven't eaten in a while, I go to this. I go to this before I go to toad. Um, mainly because it's easier. My poor toads, I don't want them being fed off. Now the other thing I do with salmon is I am going to cut off some pieces of one. My dog is coming eagerly to see if I'm going to cut off some pieces and drop them on the floor. Not usually, doggy. All right. What's this? Um, I'm going to cut off some pieces that I'm going to use for my little runty um, western hog nose. But I'm also going to give it to my tricolor babies. You know, I've heard a lot of people, a lot of people like, ah, oh, dry colors are so easy. And, and I find that they are once they're eating, but I have a pairing, my Elvira babies, that just, they are challenging to feed. And this is not a species that a lot of people have experience with, uh, even the ones who are experienced with them. I think they've only been, the species has only been in North America since 2012 or so. In any event, they've not been around very long, so you do not have the decades of experience that say corn snakes and ball pythons have, and even Western hognose, you've got a good 15, 20 years of people having them, uh, even though they are becoming much more popular lately. But in any event, I use this with my tricolor babies that don't eat. Somebody in one of the tricolor groups recommended this. Um, for the ones that don't take pinkies right away, or like my westerns, uh, the ones that are too tiny to take pinkies right away, I just take some salmon. Um, I didn't include the skin at first, but now I'm seeing that they seem to be more motivated by it when the skin's there, so. I cut them in little tiny slivers. This might even be too big. Um, just so they're this big, you know, they're good bite size, I guess. And then I remove their waters. And then I offer these on deli cup lids similar to these or maybe half or even one that's cut in half. I like the ones, I like actually cutting them in half because then you don't have this lip, which is a challenge to the derp that is the tricolor hog nose. Like, oh, nope, that's a wall, can't find anything. So by cutting it in half, it's a little easier for them to access it. But in any event, I remove the water. I put the bit of salmon on one of these lids with a few drops of water there too. Sometimes I'll use the salmon liquid like we have over here for the scenting purposes. And it it's worked with about at least half of my, my tricolors that decide they don't want to eat uh, right away. It's worked with about half. I've had some very stubborn babies uh, I've lost a couple, I, and it's our first year with this species, and we don't own very many. We only own four adults, so we don't really have the experience base to know um, what is normal or what is typical. For all we know, we own the outliers. So in any event, I'm going to slice this up. We have several babies that just had their first shed. They're kind of like a corn snake in that they have their first shed a week after hatching or so, so I don't bother feeding until I know that they've they've had that. Um, and I do leave these at least overnight. The tricolors, more than any species we own, oh, they are the ones that might eat this tomorrow, just because that's when they find it. Many, many times with my adults, well, my males, my females tend to take it right away, but my, many times with my adult males, I will go, I will offer them a mouse. Next day, I go check to see who ate, and I note, okay, this one did not eat, this male did not eat, need to come back, throw away his mouse. And I come back and it's been more than 24 hours. You know, I come back to throw away his mouse and he's eating it, which is gross, but they can handle it. I've heard cases of the meeting, both tricolors and Westerns uh, roadkill. So I suppose if they can stomach that, what's well, a day old mouse. Um, but in any event, um, I leave this on a deli cup lid in the container with the hog. Um, I use Reptibark because Southern California is extremely dry. 
and um, they like higher humidity. So I use the Reptibark because it holds the humidity better. And it seems to help. I don't move them to feed. Um, I have tried that sometimes and I've gotten some success. Um, but yeah, my challenging ones are challenging. <laughs> So this is how I use the salmon. And then thankfully, we like salmon in the house, so I'll be cooking this all tonight. This liquid will get refrozen for scenting purposes. And uh, this is also a nice treat for your um, hogs. I've not had, I've not checked to see if corns will eat it. Uh, but it's a nice treat. It's not a complete meal because you do not have the organ meat. So that means you do not have the full range of vitamins, calcium, all that kind of stuff that they need. Uh, but for getting an animal started, for getting um, the little tiny babies that are too small to eat the whole prey, it, it's not gonna hurt them if their first month they're getting this because that is certainly preferable to nothing. So that is how we use the salmon. These are some of our tricolor babies. We finally do have that are actually not in the rack. So ignore the labels. That's from when I'm in, um, roommating. So, when feeding the pieces of salmon, I just take the little half of the feeder like this, so that way he can find it or she can find it. I don't remember which one this is. Little piece of salmon. And I'm gonna leave the water in there for now. This particular baby tricolor who doesn't want to show himself on camera. eating pieces of salmon. So this is a good time to show you how uh, I scent, which is really not that complicated, to see if he takes it, she takes it. So I take my little half of the deli cup lid here. And one of these are all frozen thawed day old pinkies. Dip them in the liquid, put it on the lid thingy, and put it there. So hopefully they're inspired. I may even add a little more salmon liquid later to see if it's a little uh, more tempting, a little stinkier. Now in scenting with the sardine, what I do is very simple. Um, first of all, I want to point out this does have salt in it. Um, you can see, whoops, camera's over here. Uh, it does have salt in it. Um, I've never had a problem with it, but obviously that's not ideal. I think they just use it for preservation, so um, as a preservative. So in the future, I'm going to get the Brunswick, but again, I've used this brand constantly and not had any kind of problems. So, and it is more for scenting than anything. So you open it up, you see it is really oily, but that is not oil that they've added. That is just the natural oil of the sardine. It's a very oily fish. So I just take the liquid and I drain it. This is usually the size of condiment cup that I like to use. Um, and then after it's drained, We'll take these little fishies and put them in deli cups and freeze them as well because you can freeze chunks of them that you then use as um, for scenting as well. Like you can put about this much. Oh no, okay, come here. You can put about this much into a uh, another deli cup like this, add some water, put a lid on, freeze it, and you've got some scenting. So that's how I use the sardine. And Lucy would really like me to drop something, huh, Lucy? I would like some sardine. Sardine smells good. Can I have some sardine? Lucy, let me show you the two things she does. I gotta do my hand gesture. Okay, Lucy, sit. There you go, good girl. Down. Good girl. Oh, now I have to give you something. Fine, have some sardine. Ah, 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 ah. Sit down. Lucy, down. Good dog. I made the mistake of giving dog some sardines, so here comes the wrecking crew. Okay, Leroy. Coffee cake. Razzle. There's the timid one, so we'll give her some over here. Give me Razz. Give me Razzmatazz. Okay. 